The following is a presentation of The Day. Winning isn't easy. It takes hard work, persistence, and a bit of luck. Injuries occur. Chemistry suffers. Time can be everything. Winning is step one. Then comes the jump. The move to elite status, to championship contender, and eventually to champion. New London is looking to make the jump. Losses to Windsor and St. Bernard, both in overtime after losing late leads, showed the young whalers just how hard winning can be. Now coach Dave Cornish looks for leadership from his big three and continued contributions from his deep roster as the whalers look to finish games. Fitch is also searching for the key ingredient to close out games. Xavier Good is a pure scorer. J.J. Robinson, an explosion of energy. Jacob Francis, a force. Malachi Saab, a playmaker. And Calvin Sebastian and Xander Timmerman, well, they're the glue on a team that feels like it is ready to stake its claim as the league's best. Coach Charles Sylvan knows that, like the Whalers, if they can learn to close, they might just have a case. The Conway Gymnasium will once again be the center of the ECC universe as rivals collide as they try to make the jump. It's the Whalers and the Falcons, and it's live on game day on theday.com. Conway Gymnasium is filling up and a capacity crowd is expected. All eyes on the ECC River rivalry, the Fitch Falcons and the New London Whalers, two teams looking to make the jump into the uber elite status currently occupied by St. Bernard's and all the action live on game day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that's good begins with a smile at Water for Dental Health. Your smile is our top priority. Our entire team dedicated to providing you the personalized dental care you deserve. So contact them at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. Casey O'Neill along with the coach Chris Giusti. And it was a week ago we were here. The atmosphere feels the same. That game lived up to the expectations. An overtime win by St. Bernard in the week leading up. New London's been idle. Fitch at St. Bernard was in a similar position to New London, had him on the ropes, couldn't close. And so these two teams are now looking up at St. Bernard's, seeing who's the next best. Yeah, and it's a great night to prove who's best Friday night at the Conway Gymnasium. This game is gonna be high octane, octane Casey, up and down. Last week we expected a high scoring game. It, it kind of got embroiled in a lot of um, banging around down, down in the paint and a lot of missed shots from close range. I expect tonight we're gonna see some more open space because of the style of play that Fitch likes to play. They're gonna press you as soon as you come out of the locker room, but if you can break that press, there are opportunities on the other side to get easy baskets, and Fitch is just gonna transition and keep attacking the basket all night long. So I expect a high octane fun game to watch. Well, high octane and fun it means nothing much for the sports doctor. Keith O'Brien, what do you got? Hey, Casey, coach, the one word that comes tonight, mind to me tonight, is stuck. Dave Corn is stuck on 199 wins, and he's been stuck in the practice facility for a week with this New London team. They are chomping at the bit to get out here on the court tonight and win one of these big league ball games. You know, going into the halftime with the lead hasn't been the problem for the one in this year. It's been finishing it off. And as for Fitch, well, can they beat the heavyweights? They lost to St. Bernard's earlier this year. It's a big test for Charlie Sylvan and his team. Casey getting unstuck and getting out of the gate. My two headlines tonight. Well, there are a bunch of other headlines, Sports Doctor. New faces at Fitch, new suits on Coach Dave Cornish. The need for a new scoreboard here at New London High School. We will meet all the players in today's game right now on game day. JJ Robinson, Nate the Hill Magnet. Calvin Mackay Sebastian, Armin Mess Elementary. Xavier Good, Nathan Hill Elementary. Xander Timmerman, Sega Heart Elementary. Jacob Francis, Charles Bottom Elementary School. Malachi Saab, PS58, New York City. Keith Go. 
Pleasant Valley Elementary. It's Keith Reels, SP Butler Elementary. Nick Wagner, SP Butler Elementary. Wes Longino, NEA. Nathan Bertu, Sacred Heart. Amir Hall, Tierra Wheeler Memorial. Deshaun Phillips, Us Never Them Elementary. Devin Williams, Us Never Them Elementary. Savon Warren, St. Augustine's. Julius Washington, Us Never Them Elementary. Jameer Hall, Tierra Wheeler Memorial. Kaden Gaskin, KB Skills Academy. John Mir Torres, SOT Academy. Justin Guzman, Miami Spring Middle School. Rakim Davis, KB Kills Academy. Jackson Bodet, Northeast Academy. CJ Punch, Beard Academy. Zuri Craig, SOB Academy. All that is good begins with a smile. At Waterford Dental Health, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the personalized, gentle care that you deserve. Part of our commitment to serving our patients includes providing information that helps them to make more informed decisions about their oral health needs. Our website is a resource we hope you'll find both useful and interesting. Contact us today at waterforddentalhealth.com. Whalers lined up, ready to rock and roll. We'll have our national anthem here at New London. Last week, of course, a great moment where the whole crowd sang. We'll turn it over to the national anthem and to your ROTC. Crystal Christie, New London, bringing the house down, national anthem time. So, tremendous, tremendous, Casey. Let's talk right away with time as they go into the starting lineups. Always a good time for us to squeeze mm. some of that freshly squeezed juice. Let's talk about the keys to tonight's game. Well, Casey, Fitch at New London. The Whalers went 2-0 against the Falcons last season, and the Falcons trying to, as we said, prove that they are ready to take that jump into the elite spot in the ECC. So the keys for the Falcons, get back. The press will work sometimes, but you have to make sure you get back when New London breaks it and not give up the easy scores. Good night. Talking about Fitch's new offensive weapon, Xavier Good. He needs to continue his scoring proficiency and keep grinding, stay the course, keep your composure and execute wisely 
in the fourth quarter. For New London, protect the rock. Good fundamentals versus the Fitch pressure. Handle the ball soundly. Two hand passes and two hand catches. Extra, extra. Be the more aggressive rebounding team. Use your size to create extra shots with offensive rebounds. And let Dev cook. Williams is the best shooter in the gym. Find ways to get him shots when you need a bucket. And I think that last statement, Coach, is the one I want to seize on. When you need a bucket. We talked about these two teams and their need to be able to learn how to finish games. It's, it's maybe the hardest part of turning uh, a good team into a great team. Uh, these two teams are loaded with talent. At the end of the game, you know the ball is going to be in J.J. Robinson's hands for Fitch. But is Xavier Good emerging as, and does he need to emerge as, the guy at the end of games? And for New London, right there, Boo Boo Phillips, he wants to be that guy. But is it maybe better that Devin Williams is that guy at the end of the game? I think New London's biggest question, and Coach Cornish needs to, to help them figure this out, is who's the guy at the end of the game? St. Bernard's knows it's Amir's team and the ball goes into Amir Gray's hands. New London has so many different guys, and sure, on a given night, Savon Warren could score 25, Boo Boo 25, right? Julius Washington emerging as a star, but when it's a two-point game and there's two minutes left, who's going to control the Whalers? Yeah, and that's what these games in the first half of the season are all about. Mark Jones told me the other night, by game 12, by game 13, you better have that stuff figured out because now it's the stretch run and now you can't afford to be tinkering around. We're kind of on the precipice of that moment. If New London hasn't figured it out by now, they need to figure it out in the next week or so. And tonight is a perfect opportunity to kind of figure out who that guy's going to be uh, when crunch time hits. Well, one guy who's got it figured out is Coach Dave Cornish. He said that everything he does this year is an homage to you. He is emerging as the sartorial star of the ECC, the, the mint green suit. Only, juice the esque only you could pull off a suit it's like tremendous. that. It's tremendous. It's better than anything I could have pulled off, honestly. There was a, there was a vacancy, right? Bernardi left. You know, I, I obviously have been gone for a couple years. There's a vacancy that this whole um, trend towards wearing the athletic fit. Um, it, we see it even, you know, in the pro level, in the college level. There was a vacancy for the tailored suit to come back. And Coach Cornish said, I'm not just bringing back your standard uh, men's warehouse suit. I'm going full tailor custom and with the school colors embedded in. Uh, just a tremendous A++ plus plus for Coach Cornish tonight. We're going to get New London monogrammed on that thing for him before the year's out. So one thing we should uh, let everybody at home know is the uh, scoreboard here at New London High School is not working. Uh, in addition, our scoreboard is not working. So I will be giving you updated scores as uh, regularly as possible, both time and score. But the time will be available to you on your scoreboard. So you'll know the time. I'll give you the score and the tip by punch, won by the Whalers. And there's the frenetic Fitch defense. Yeah, a little 2-1-2 to start trapping. Different look here from the Falcons to start the game. Turned it over. Robinson comes the other way, kicks. Whalers man to man. Sebastian drives on Warren. Jump stop, backboard shot, no good. Active is Francis. He'll draw the foul. So right off the bat, a second chance look here for Jacob Francis and the Falcons, he'll shoot two. Yeah, and one of the keys to the game that I thought New London could kind of exploit um, Fitch with some of their collective size, but the one guy that Fitch does have that's a tremendous rebounder is Jacob Francis. And if he's going to continue playing like that and getting offensive rebounds, New London's going to be in trouble. Two for Francis. So still no score as Francis misses the first one. And he'll have another. Second one is good. One nothing. Falcons on top. And here they come with that 2-1-2. New London dissecting it right now. Get a man in the middle. That's Washington. 
Dump down, punch, kick back to Warren. Floater no good. Washington on the offensive glass, but Sebastian rips it out of his hands. Whaler's pressure now, little pressure now. Robinson for three. Good. Four nothing Falcons on the JJ Robinson three. Trap on Williams. We're gonna get a walk. So four nothing here in the early going, and this is how Fitch started against St. Bernard's as well. Frenetic and ugly, right? They want to turn you over. They want to get moving. And it's going to take somebody to settle things down for New London here the next time they possess the basketball. Yeah, two turnovers and three possessions so far for the Whalers. And I think, as important, a missed shot on a relatively good look. they got to knock those down. Offensive efficiency for New London is going to be huge. Oh, pretty move. Malachi Saab with the basket and the foul. That's going to be 6 nothing Falcons here to start. And Saab will shoot the bonus. Yeah, and you wonder, and a quick timeout here from, from Coach Dave, you wonder if, they're, if the Whalers are a little rusty, haven't played since last Friday. So I think it's a 30-second timeout, settle things down. I think he wants to address how he wants to break what's going to be the inevitable pressure he sees coming off this free throw. Yeah, so Fitch has played against St. Bernard on Monday, against East Lyme on Wednesday. This is their third game of the week, whereas New London hasn't played since last week's um, heartbreaking overtime loss to the Saints, a game that they had control of uh, for 90% of it. So um, maybe a little rust here, but Fitch is playing a lot hungrier, and it's always easier to be the hunter. And New London has to recognize that, you know, Coming into this game tonight, the target is on their back, and they have to be ready for that. Sports Doctor was in listening to Dave, Coach Dave Cornish. Sports Doctor, what did Coach Cornish have to say? Well, he talked about the energy level on both ends of the floor. Be ready for it on the defensive end and ready for it on the offensive end and getting guys in position, Casey. Get somebody in the middle, maybe beat this press on the back door, maybe an easy bucket going in. Different look for it. coming out of it. Phillips takes the jumper, no good. Weak side rebound, tip. And Good comes down with it, pitches up 6 nothing here in the early going. Robinson, now Sebastian, kicks out. Saab, three ball, good! That's a high performing Saab right there, 9 nothing Falcons. And a lot of open shooters on the perimeter right now. London's got to shore up that man to man. Pitch dropping back now. Inside it goes, Washington hard to the basket, misses the easy one, but Warren comes flying through with the tip. 9-2 Falcons. Robinson with Phillips on him, goes right by him, uses the left high at the basket. Uh, JJ high with the left hand and it's 11-2. Dump down again, and Punch is going to get fouled. That's a good look down onto the block, and we're going to see our first sub for New London. And Simons Gaskin's going to check into the game here. Washington will have a seat. So New London's going to go a little smaller, extra ball handler as they trail in the early going here 11 to 2. And Fitch has come out blazing 4 of 4 from the field. Uh, great look on the inbounds. Warren gets the cut. Fouled on his way to the basket, and he'll shoot two. That's three trips now, though. The Whalers have had come up with a good look. The problem, I think, has been the other side. They've been, defensively, they've been terrible. Yeah, and Fitch hasn't missed. 4-4 four, four from the field. Uh, they've missed two free throws, or it could be worse. 11-2 right now in favor of the Falcons. Two shots for Savon Warren. First one. Is good, so 11-3, Falcons on top. One more for Savan. That one's front iron, gets his own rebound, and goes back up over the top, misses it, gets his other own rebound. Warren kicks to Phillips for three. Back iron, no good, but look at Warren. 
He can't get it to go. Four empty trips for Savon Warren. And the other way, we get a touch foul on Gaskin. Eleven three, Falcons on top. They'll inbound with Sebastian. Up top, Robinson now. Key right now is Ben Whaler's not making shots. Falcons making shots. I mean, New London's had a lot of good looks. Sometimes it's that simple. Mismatch here. Francis goes strong, kicks out, open three, back iron, no good. But Sob's going to be fouled. Punch went out onto the perimeter and got a piece of him, so Malachi Saab's gonna shoot three. Yeah, and another big key that maybe we didn't see coming is how much of a factor Francis is. He's drawing so much of attention from the Whalers' defense inside that the perimeter shooters are wide open. And I'm actually of the opinion that I would never double him, nor would I give him that much attention. If he scores, it's two. It's better than Saab in good getting wide open looks for three. And right now, New London hasn't been able to prevent that. I, I mean, occasionally he's going to score, but I'd let him do that. I'd rather him score from eight feet than kick, give up those threes. Nakeem Davis into the game, replacing punch, 12-3. Pitch on top. Ten point lead here for the Falcons, 13 to three. With that one, two, two, odd front. Almost Davis like a three, two. pulls up at the line, no good. And we're gonna get a foul against the Whalers. They're gonna call that, I believe, on Warren. Don't have to call it on Davis as he missed the shot and crashed. And like so. you said, Casey, there's, there's open shots to be had. Um, London might want to start thinking about who they're going to put in the middle to take those open shots. You might want to think about uh, getting Dev in there to get those open shots in the middle. So already five team fouls on New London with 4.37 remaining in the quarter. So Sebastian's going to shoot two with a 10-point lead. And yeah, Devin Williams hasn't shot the ball yet. That one's hard off the back iron, so one more for Sebastian. Calvin Sebastian, of course, was on New London last year along with Xavier Good, as was the assistant coach, Kareem Brown. So some faces moving from New London over to Groton, only enhancing and increasing this rivalry between these two teams. Biggest lead of the game is 11, 14-3, Fitch on top. And they do just what you said, coach, they send Williams into that empty spot. He gets it there, puts it hard on the floor. Reverse, no good. And Warren with the follow through. Savon Warren has been a beast on the glass. 14-5, Falcons on top. Saab tried to dump it to Francis. A little too strong, coming the other way, New London. Williams drives, hangs, no good. Francis got a piece of it. Falcons coming the other way, Robinson. Good, drives baseline. Steps on the line, good defense from Caden Simons-Gaskin, turnover, Whaler ball, trailing 14 to five. Back-to-back -back turnovers now by the Falcons. New London making some adjustments. I wanna see Dev pull up and shoot that ball rather than always go, always go to the rim. We're gonna keep it here during this timeout because I wanna talk a little bit about that. I, I think one of the lost arts is that intermediate shot. Kids are so used to either going to the basket or shooting the three. And, and I think one of the guys we talked about uh, is Amir Gray. He, he's ex excellent at getting it to that elbow and knocking the shot down. Similarly, Xavier Good is excellent at getting inside the, you know, the three-point line and knocking it down. When Williams catches that ball at the free throw line, he, he's got to resist the temptation to just blindly go to the basket because he's so good at it. He's got to trust that shooting stroke from 15 feet. Yeah, I couldn't say it any better. You know, what you got to take what the defense gives you, whether they're playing man, whether they're playing zone, 
whatever, whether they're pressing, whatever the defense gives you for an open shot, you got to be able to make that shot. Um, that's what makes basketball an interesting game is that it's not, you're not always going to score the same way or the way that you want to score. So you, you said it perfectly, and, and I'm curious to see what Coach Cornish has, Cornish has dialed up here. He's already used both of his 30 second timeouts in the first quarter of this game. Gaskin back to Phillips. Good on Williams. Phillips finds Warren at the free throw line. No good. Francis with a strong rebound. Falcons coming the other way. Good, no good. Good defense from Warren. Gaskin crosses over, finds Davis over the top of Francis off the pump fake. Hakeem Davis with a big basket. 14-7, Falcons on top. London, staying in the man-to-man -man here. Good fighting off of multiple screens, but Williams right there with him. Now Saab. Good screen up top. Good fall away. Ah, oh, X is going to give it to you. 16-7. That's Falcon. a tough shot. That's the kinds of shots he's been making so far. Steal from Saab. Ahead to Good. Hangs in the air, but Saab's there for the follow. We're going to get a foul. I think they're going to get a foul with the body, and that's going to send Xavier Good to the line to shoot two. They're going to call the foul on Deshaun Phillips. So the follow-up by Malachi Saab will not count. Score remains 16-7, to and Xavier Good will shoot two. This is only his fourth game back. You see the tape on his right hand. He suffered a hand injury in the preseason. Um, but ever since coming back, man, has he been scoring the basketball well. Uh, had over 30 points the other night at St. Bernard. Second one's good, back to a 10-point lead. 17-7, Falcons on top. Back into that 2-1-2. Two there's the trap. Steal from Saab. Good for three. Got it! Xavier Good puts the lead up to 13, 20 to 7. Phillips drives, loses it. Up ahead. Good with Simons Gaskin. Xavier Good lighting him up here at the Conway Gymnasium. It's 22 to seven. Williams, left hand no good. Davis with the putback and he'll shoot two. Nakeem Davis doing everything he can to keep the Whalers in it. Right now they're getting a buzzsaw from the Falcons. Yeah, four turnovers, back to back possessions. They turned it over, so it's a little personal 6-0 uh, run from Xavier Good. 22-7. Sports doctor, you've been listening in. What do you got? Yeah, during that last time out, Coach Dave Cornish and his staff talked about moving the basketball, passing it, and reversing it against that zone. The last three or four times, you see the dribble, trying to dribble through the pressure, and it's led to turnovers and easy buckets on the opposite end. So right now, I think what it comes down to is a little bit of execution on the London side. To test the wills. You gotta be patient, you gotta be you know, consistent, you gotta keep going after it and not resort to the temptation of dribble penetration. Empty set for the Whalers though as Davis misses them both. 22 to seven, Falcons with the lead here in the first period. Good, drives, blocked by Davis. 15 on the shot clock. Sebastian to inbound. There's a steal by Simons Gaskin. Straight up he goes and lays it in over the top of Saab. 22 to nine.
Robinson up top for the Falcons. Wants a screen from Francis, calls out the play. Baseline, kick out, sub for three. Good! Oh, uh, he's playing like a Mercedes. <laughs> 10 for Malachi Saab, 25-9 Falcons. Lob up top, Simons Gaskin gets his own rebound. Kick out, Williams for three, good! D. Will with the triple. It's 13, 25, 12 Falcons. Essentially shot clock and game clock match. Robinson bullies his way, can't get it, but Francis with the tip, 27 to 12. Whalers looking for the last shot. Warren, under 10, finds Davis. And that's a basket by Akeem Davis. And I think unless Robinson hit, can hit it from three-quarter court, no, he can't. At the end of one, 27-14, Falcons on top. We'll be right back. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in in Waterford. Find your shooter. There's hot, there's blazing, and then there's whatever Fitch is right now. Coach, just how hot are they? And Fuego, KC. Nine of 12 from the field, four of four from the three-point line. They are sizzling down here in Conway. New London actually has more shots. But obviously they're getting, they have more misses. They've gotten more offensive rebounds. So they've taken 18 shots, but only have made six of them. Um, and Fitch just couldn't have asked for a better start here. They've turned the Whalers over four times and they've scored almost at will. New London's got to make some kind of adjustment here in terms of, you know, how they're playing their defense because Fitch is really getting any shot they want on offense. Sports Doctor was listening to the uh, huddle. Sports Doctor, what do you got? Yeah, we're off to a good start, the coach said in the huddle. You know, and basically said, keep up the pressure on the defensive end and be patient a little bit on the offensive end because, you know, what they're leaving is wide open on the three-point line, guys. You've seen it the last couple times down. Wide open looks, and they're knocking them down. So just stick with the game plan, but just a lot of confidence right now in the Fitch timeout, Casey. Well, we're going to find out. Right here, it's going to be Falcon basketball to start the second period, and we'll see if New London does anything differently. But they're so concerned with these drives to the basket, and they're leaving shooters wide open. And, and another big adjustment that Fitch has made um, coming in prior to the game starting is they're not pressing full court. They said they're going to use their half-court trap this game, and, and maybe that has New London a little befuddled. Bastion, up top to Good, Good, long three, no good. Heat check shot there. Phillips drives, floater in the lane, no good. Davis and Francis go to the floor and Watch we got out. a little, little temper is flaring. And Davis has come in and given the Whalers some great energy. They needed that uh, because they're not making their shots. So when you're not making your shots, what do you got to do? You got to get extra possessions, whether they're from offensive rebounds, steals, block shots, taking charges. You got to find a way to get extra possessions when you're not making your shots. A punch goes in for Davis. As you said, very good minutes from Akeem Davis. Now TJ Punch has to replicate that because the Whalers are going to be climbing back. Williams for three. Knock it down. So smooth. Got to find ways to get that kid some more shots. Sebastian for three. That's going to be short. Williams now out and running. 
Challenge is good. Reverse layup is good. Whalers are the closest they've been in a while. It's back to single digits. 27-19. Little 5-0 run from Dev. Good defense on good. Spin, fall away. Oh, X is going to rock. Xavier, good. He do it all in the basketball. Yeah, he knew. He made up his mind. He had the freshman on him. He made up his mind that he was going to go and score that basket. Extra pass from Warren is a little too much. Off the Falcons, however, it'll stay with the Whalers. Twenty nine nineteen Falcons with a ten point lead. And that's the other reason you can't leave Fitch wide open. They got guys that can score when you play good defense. Mm. Williams jump stop reverse layup is good. D will heating up for the Whalers. Seven last seven points have been scored by Williams. Twenty nine twenty one Falcons. Francis underneath Sebastian. The Whalers lost them. Can't have that. Coach Cornish is not happy. 31 21. Back to a 10 point lead for the Falcons. Williams wants a screen. Does it. Draws contact. And that's going to be an offensive foul. They're going to call the travel first. I think that's a good call. I think that's a good call. Anthony Malhoy's got the call there. I think Williams took an extra step before a contact. And I think they should be happy about the call because if not, I think it would have been an offensive foul. Yeah, absolutely. Remember in the second period now, the fouls reset. So nobody is in the bonus yet. 20, excuse me, 31-21. Fitch on top. Sebastian, pump fakes. Steal from Punch. Stolen back by Francis. Sebastian. Pump fakes again, blocked. Out of the pack comes Williams. One on one with Good. Oh, how did D. Will get that one to go down? Williams is heating up for the Whalers. He scored the last nine for the Whalers. Robinson in the other direction. Basket is good, the block on Warren. JJ. Gonna shoot one. Every time the Whalers start to surge, the Falcons are taking that punch and counter punching. This time it's Robinson with the basket and the foul. So Robinson will shoot the bonus, 33-23, Falcons on top. Officials sorting things out. Whalers wanted a charge, obviously. It was a bang bang call underneath. But this quarter, Casey, I think New London's kind of found a little bit of a flow on offense by going to the guy that they know can score the rock uh, with proficiency. That is Devin Williams. And that's given the defense some life. Uh, Fitch helped them out by taking two quick threes to start the quarter, but Fitch has settled down since then and have scored um, three of their last four possessions, including this deuce and damage from JJ, a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. Yeah, New London's going to have to go into halftime you know, at a manageable number. They keep getting it to 10 to 8, and they just can't get closer. they got to get this thing closer. Going into halftime, I think I think 10 is a, a lot to ask. Robinson misses strong, and the lead remains 33-23 Falcons. Williams. Boo Boo Phillips. Williams drives, pulls up, no good, strong. Saab. Loses it, Williams goes over the top. Somehow it doesn't go down. And the Falcons come down with it. That was like three quarters of the way down. Robinson, no good. 
and Punch is going to get the foul drawn. He'll draw the foul as he was hit. Francis has been incredibly active. He's, he's the only white jersey in there, and he's given the New London rebounders fits, getting his hands on all kinds of loose balls. Now here's the small version of the Falcons lineup. Timmerman's in, Francis is out. Let's see how the Whalers attack it differently without Francis in the middle. And a quick foul goes against Good. So 33-23, Fitch on top. We're going to get Amir Hall into the game, replacing Simons Gaskin and Davis back into the game, replacing Warren. Whalers will inbound on the side. Phillips drives baseline, tries to make a pass, but it's intercepted. Other way comes Robinson. Robinson partially blocked by Williams. What an athletic play by Punch to get it ahead to Williams. Williams is going to draw a foul in traffic. That was a lot of action back and forth, but of all of what we just saw, give Punch credit. He was going to the ground. That would have been a travel. And for him to get that out to Williams on the break, exceptionally aware. And Williams will shoot two with a chance to cut it back into single digits. And good defense by Williams challenging the J.J drive to the basket. Right now, the basket on this side of the floor for New London has a lid on it. This is an important free throw. I think just to make sure that the basket still works. <laughs> uh, and clearly, there's a lid on it. 33-23 still. Whalers miss an opportunity. They leave good wide open for three. In and out. Punch with a strong rebound. And we're going to get a turnover by New London. And those are the mistakes New London can ill afford, especially down 10. Yeah, you don't need that outlet if it's not wide open. Take your time. Tough assignment here for Amir Hall. He gets the defensive call on Robinson. Francis back in the game, sets him a screen. Saab shakes Phillips. Dumps down to Francis, he's double teamed. Punch plays good defense, and Williams comes out of it for New London. Pushing is Williams. And Robinson jumps him, strips. And with the left hand, he misses it, but there's good with the follow. Nobody and no did. one back for New London. Yeah, they just gave up on that play. Williams drives, left hand, can't get it to go. Nothing going down for New London right now. Falcons running. Robinson senses it. Oh, and Timmerman draws the foul, and I think that was a break. That should have been a jump. Thirty-five, twenty-three. Falcons on top. Zimmerman at the line to shoot two. So Xander Timmerman will shoot two for the Falcons. I think it was a tie-up, but. Impossible with the frenetic action to know for sure. Timmerman trying to add to the 12 point lead. 36 23. We're going to see Jackson Bedette into the game and Savon Warren back in. Caden Gaskins back in the game. So we'll see where the scoring comes from now with the Whalers with Williams out. He's been just about everything for them here. He has been. Nine points this quarter for the Whalers, all from Williams. Timmerman knocks them both down, and the lead is back on to back to 14. Under three minutes now. Oh, look at the move, but nothing. I mean nothing going down for New London right now. Bedette over Francis. No. Falcons playing unbelievable defense, and Simons Gaskin is going to get called for the foul as he tried to intercept the pass, but 
I can't recall a time where the Whalers have missed this many shots around the basket. Well, last Friday night, both teams missed a lot, and Fitch said, we're not following that script. We're gonna make our shots. And London in a funk. I don't know how long they can go with Williams on the bench. Saab, stutter step, walk. So turnover. Whalers ball, down 37 to 23. And still not one full court press from the Falcons. This zone trap has worked swimmingly tonight. It's more like a man matchup now. Phillips all the way to the basket. Offensive foul. And Boo Boo Phillips went down hard. Francis took the charge. But that's the kind of, that's that little bit of press, that's trying to do too much. That's 10 straight possessions, Casey, that New London has not scored. So they had a, a streak there where they had Devin Williams on a personal nine point run for them. But now they've gone 10 straight possessions without a basket, either missed shot or turnover. 37-23, Fitch with the ball and a 14 point lead. Devin Williams back. Good, pull up. Instead, dumps it down to Virtue. Back to Robinson. No good. Loose ball, good, hunts it down. And he draws the foul on a sliding haul. Yeah, just those 50-50 balls of Fitch. Has just wanted it more. A very unselfish play from, from Xavier Good. I thought he had an opportunity to score inside. Kicks it out to Virtue, or kicks it inside to Virtue. Fifth foul on New London. That puts Good at the line to shoot two. So two for Xavier Good. First one is in and the lead is now 38-23, 15 point lead for the Falcons. Second one is nothing but the bottom of the cup. 14 for good, Casey. 39-23, the lead is 16. Williams drives, wild shot, no good. Timmerman comes out, loses it, but ultimately Saab comes out for the Falcons. He loses it. Up ahead, Simons Gaskin. And finally, the Whalers score at the basket, break the streak. It's 14, 39-25. That was 11 straight possessions without a basket before that one by Simons Gaskin. Robinson picks the dribble up. Now good. Crossover, back three. Short, tipped. Virtue. Robinson over the top of Bedette. Second chance effort from the Falcons. The big body of Nate Virtue gave him a second look. Warren will draw the foul. He'll shoot two. That foul is gonna go against Timmerman. 41-25. I think Fitch, you know, Fitch just came out and was just throwing haymakers and, and New London's still trying to get their balance here. 41-26, lead back to 15. Can the Whalers find a way to get it manageable, you know, closer to 10 before half. They just, they just got to get to halftime. I mean, <laughs> they got to get to the locker room. Two of the free throws good for the Whalers. Jameer Hall checks in, replacing Simons Gaskin. They, 
got to limit Fitch to one more. This, this has got to be Fitch's last possession of the half. They got to limit him to one shot here and then get the last shot themselves and get to the locker room. 41-27, 14-point lead for the Falcons. 10-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Robinson with Hall on him. Screen from Virtue. Robinson, Euro step, and the left. Well, they switched the screen, and that was about as big a mismatch as you're going to find in the ECC. Robinson on Badet. 43-27. Turnover. Kick out. Good. And we're going to get a walk on good with .7 seconds. So barring something unforeseen, it's going to be a 16-point lead going to the locker room for the Falcons. Williams. Good if it goes. It is not good. What a half for the Fitch Falcons. A 43-27 lead. The sports doctor is gonna ask Coach Sylvan what he thinks. Well, Coach, you guys got off to a hot start to begin this game. Was it your half court press that the big difference in the beginning? Uh, I think we executed pretty well. They looked a little uncomfortable earlier with the pressure, but they seem to make some adjustments and try to settle down against it. How about your play on the offensive end? Uh, we played pretty well in spurts. We're doing a nice job in transition, but we're not executing what we need to execute in the half court. What's the message in the locker room for this team to close it out? Because you, you know New London's coming. It's zero to zero. We're going to expect pressure, so we're going to go in and come up with a plan and try to execute against that pressure in the second half. All right, good luck, Coach. Casey? Thank you, sports doctor. Well, the got it of the week. It's brought to you by my man Sock and Chip over at CNS Pawn. This week's got it comes from Ariella, who plays on the Warrior Goats in the Groton Basketball Association. And then we have all kinds of fun at halftime. Big lead for the Falcons here. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. The Got It of the Week was brought to you by CNS Pawn. You got it, they want it. Call my guys, 889 Pawn, located in downtown Norwich. Whatever you got, they want. And just like game day, they got it. Xander is a throwback, something that you would have saw in the 80s. He's your consummate glue guy. Nothing will jump off the stat sheet at you. But at the end of the game, he's got six or seven points. He had a big three, he's got four or five steals, he's always in the right place on defense, and he's an effort guy. He's the kid in practice who wins all the sprints. He's the first kid in line every time we do the four quarter drill. And he lifts those kids up with energy every night he walks into the gym. I played a little bit at AAU when I was younger, but really it was my summer of eighth grade when Coach Sylvan actually asked me to start working out with the team. And then ever since, I've just been every day going at it. He brings intensity, whether it's preseason, in season, postseason. So you can go watch them play in somewhere in the summer. And he brings it. He's the kid who's on the floor on the concrete outside at a AU event or a summer tournament. You're like, what is this kid doing? And he's parallel to the ground looking like Superman going for a loose ball. Our practices are very competitive, and you don't really have to be like a big scorer because we got guys that can do that. So in practices, I just go hard all the time and come up with the little things that are important for when we win. He's one of those kids where he doesn't care if he ever scores. He just cares that Fitch has 78 and the opponent has 77. That's all that drives him when he's on the court. I feel like there's a lot of people looking, you know, New London and St. Bernard's, but I feel like for the past couple of years, we've been the team that's always been slept on and not as looked at as much. But I feel like in the upcoming weeks, we'll be the number one team to look out for. But that's kind of like you too. Yeah. Just like the team gets, gets overlooked, so have you. Yeah. I feel like I have been overlooked a little bit, but you know, towards 
the middle end of the season, I feel like that people will start to know who I really am more on the court. I originally started off playing soccer when I was a little kid, up until second grade. Then I had moved. I had moved to Bridgeport when I was younger, new school. I had to adapt to basketball because there was no more soccer. And I've just been playing ever since. I fell in love with the sport. Soren is Savon Warren. So when I was really young, before I got here, I was actually playing point guard, shooting guard for my team. I got out here, I was a little bigger. I adapted to playing bigger. No good, but the tip from Savon Warren. We're at our best with Savon playing around 15 feet and in, and he's, he's our best rebounder. He's got a very good mid-range shot, very good, and, and he's confident with it. He doesn't like to always take it. He likes to, you know, drift out to the three-point line sometimes, but, I mean, and that's okay. That's fine some, once in a while, but when he really wants to eat and score a lot of points, he's got to get around that, that pain area and, and, and do damage. Anything that my coaches tell me I will eat at, for sure, and anything to help the team win. I just want to win. Troy McKelvin played the five his senior year in, in, in high school, and he goes to Trinity and he's a point guard, All-American point guard. Dwayne Stallings played inside, never was able to, you know, shoot the three. And he goes to uh, Conn College and breaks the, the school record for three points. In AAU, you're going to have the luxury of having the 6'10", 6'8", guys, and Savon can go out and work on his perimeter games during AAU, you know, also practice and things like that. Warren, and he gets the friendly roll. But in high school, it's a little different. We don't have that luxury to have uh, a Matt Rollins and a Pete Gittins in there where he can play on the perimeter. So, you know, he, he, but he's okay with that. You got to think of the bigger picture. You got to think of where you're at at the moment and make the best of it. I know I'm not going to be a big forever, but on this team, I will play big if that's what it is to win the state championship. It's time for Game Day's Grade 8 Plays of the Week. At number 8, Cole Snyder, Brantford Wrestling. Congratulations on his 100th career match, 19-0 on the season. Tap out for the pin. At number 7, Sierra Brevar of Ledger Basketball. Look at the English as she spins it off the glass over the opposing center. Bravo, Bravar. At number six, Joal Barros, NFA track. Off he goes, he goes into the wild go, blue yonder. Look at the height. At number five, Devin Powers of Waterford. Shows the quickness, the reversal, and then, oh, look at the belly to back. Little WWE style Powers, 4-0 in the meet. Gets the pin. At number four, the diminutive. Zion Bunkley, look at the little guy, poke steel off to the races and throws it down and says, hey, Juan Morrell, I know you can dunk. Why don't, why don't you go next? You're next, Juan Morrell. At number three, Parker Spencer behind the back steal and Juan Morrell says, hey, Zion, thanks for calling me out and I can throw it down too. At number two, Fitch four by 200 relay. Elena Campbell was the first leg. Bethany Lovering the second. Emma Ford the third. And Hannah Warner was in second place when she got the baton, but 27.7 seconds later, she finishes strong and gets the win. What a leg by Warner. But at number one, you know, a three-pointer at Woodstock, well, that's saucy. But a half-court shot, that's saucier. Kaylee Saucier, look at Woodstock. They love the long three. Those are your great eight plays of the week. Well, you know, even when the Whalers thought they were back in it, it was turnovers like this, but more disheartening, not getting back. Every time the Whalers start to inch closer, something happens and they can't quite figure it out. So they're gonna have to make a big adjustment. Second half adjustment brought to you by Casey Chiropractic, located in Colchester, Connecticut. Dr. Casey and his team are dedicated to providing quality assessment and planning for total body health. 
from head to toe. Casey Chiropractic will work with you on moving better and feeling great. So give them a call at 537-2202 or check out caseychiro.net for more information. I know how great they are because, well, Casey goes to Casey. I was there today. Before I came and sat in this chair, I was at Casey Chiropractic because they take care. And if this doesn't look like total body health to you, well, then I don't know what you're looking at. Coach, what do the Whalers need to do? Well, I, I actually have two adjustments to the Whalers. Number one, you, you got to let Dev shoot the ball. You got to get him shots. That's kind of a simple adjustment, anybody in the gym. The other one is, is a little bit more subtle, and that's they can't lose guys in their half-court defense. It seems like it's a simple thing to do, but there's a lot of Fitch guys running around open, miscommunication on assignments. So they need to shore up, you know, how they're gonna play man-to-man. -man. They cannot switch that big guard screen and let Badette guard JJ or Xavier Good on the perimeter. So their man-to-man -man defense has to be shored up. Make sure you're communicating and knowing your assignments. For the Falcons, as, as well as they played, they actually went a little bit cold in the second quarter. They were, they were only, I should say only, but they were only six of 16 in the second quarter and 0 of five from three point range. So that 0 of five is where I would make the adjustment. You don't have to force those threes. You're getting, you know, drives to the baskets and good looks at the basket, inside. Um, towards the basket, driving to the basket. Don't force threes if, if you got a nice inside out three in rhythm, but you don't have to force the three point shot. Just stay the course, play your game, finish it off. So one thing you heard Coach Sylvan at halftime, they're expecting pressure. Well, in the age of the 35 second shot clock, it is a little less uh, important to turn you over early. You can certainly go and try to get some stops, but you know, 16, you're gonna need to turn the ball, you're gonna need to create some turnovers. But I, if I'm New London, my, my biggest two concerns, if I'm a fan watching, is how their instinct when pressure is on is to become selfish. And I say that not, we think of selfish in a, in a very negative way. I mean, I need to make a play for my team. It's not selfish like me, me, me. It's like, I need to do something to help. And the best thing to do is, move the ball, and when they get tense, they don't move the ball anymore. They all drive to the basket because they're trying to do something to help their team. Um, and that results, though, unfortunately, in turnovers the other way. Fitch opens the second half with a 16-point lead, 43-27. Francis misses. Washington, who we didn't hear much from in the first half, gets it to Williams. Basket is good. Foul on Sebastian. So you couldn't ask for a better start for the Whalers. And it started with a great outlet from Julius Washington, who did not play a lot of minutes in the first half. Yeah, I don't think he was playing physical enough for what New London needed. They got some good minutes out of Davis and Punch, but they need his athleticism, and more importantly, they need his scoring. Like, where's the rest of the scoring gonna come from for the Whalers? Williams now has 14 as he misses this free throw. Where's the rest of it gonna come from? But Punch gets some hustle points, but can't hold on to it. Come in the other direction, they trap Robinson. And it goes off of Malhoit, the official. Warren with a floater in the other direction, and that's four quick ones for the Whalers to start the half. And a quick violation on Sebastian. So Whalers cut it to 12 and create a turnover. And as crazy as it sounds, a basket here, and they could have it at 10. And Fitch just, just got to settle down here. Get a good defensive stop. For the Whalers, work through Williams. Phillips with Robinson on him. In the corner now, Williams drives baseline. Gets a, off oh, they're gonna call the block. I was gonna say, gets an offensive foul called against them because Francis held his ground, but that's a nice call. He slid in late. Yeah, and I also thought that Dev avoided the contact. I think it was a little bit of a floppy because Dev slid to the left, to the inside. Good call by Malhoy. Williams now with good on him. Drives to the left hand, pulls up from 15 feet, no good, crashing the boards. Robinson comes out of the pack for the Falcons. Three-pointer from good, good! 
Every time they creep in, Falcons have an answer. Xavier good up to 17 now. 46-31, it's back to 15. Warren is trapped, dumps it down. Washington with the beautiful athletic reversal. It doesn't go down though. He comes back the other way, plows headlong into Francis and we're gonna get an offensive foul called against Julius Washington. Coach Cornish, that says it just about all from him. He's beside himself right now. What's crazy is it was 16. It feels like this quarter started out all New London, and they only, they've only shaved one point off. And that's because Xavier Good has been dynamite from three. Saab for three, no good. I'm gonna get a tie up. Possession arrow favors New London. So 46-31, Fitch on top by 15. Williams, there's that nice river ball reversal. Warren, floater over the top of Sebastian won't go down. And a little bit sloppy from the Falcons here. So Fitch certainly trying to leave the door cracked for the Whalers. Yeah, three turnovers so far for the Falcons here early, not even two minutes into the third quarter. So they need to settle down a bit, but their defense has still been good. Every time Williams touches the ball, they're throwing a lot of attention at him. Phillips. Kick back up top to him. Phillips for three. No good, we're gonna get a goaltending, I think, against Savon Warren. Once again, the Casey, where is the scoring gonna come from? for the Whalers if it's not Devin Williams. They need somebody, they need Batman to enter the building and become that second scorer. Good. Kicks back out, Saab for three, in and out. And that's off of Sebastian, so Whaler basketball. It remains 46-31. And here's the first time we've seen the vaunted full court press from the Falcons. Phillips drives, floater, no good. He'll go to the line. Boo Boo Phillips draws the foul, he'll shoot two. And maybe that's why we haven't seen it. New London, we, if you followed the day's broadcasts this year, New London had one of the great offensive games in their history playing against the Windsor Warriors in the Holiday Classic at the Mohegan Sun. They scored 97 points, so Coach Sylvan probably thought to himself, if we press, it's, there's a good chance New London's gonna score over 90. I wonder if New London's ever lost a game in its school history scoring 97 points. <laughs> there's Deshaun Phillips' first point, and there's his second, so. Two from the line, draws the Whalers back to within 13, it's 46-33. Robinson penetrates, hangs in the air. No good, good defense from Savon Warren. And they're gonna say it's off of his hands, out of bounds, so it'll stay with the Falcons. But that's the, that was the kind of defensive possession that gets the Whalers in trouble when they switch the big onto the guard. Timmerman looking to inbound almost five seconds, but got it to Francis. I think the Whalers had a chance to trap there and they didn't. Now they trap the guard instead of the big. Francis hangs, spins, no good. And Warren comes out of the pack with it. Up to Phillips. Whalers have numbers. Phillips hangs in the air, floater and can't get it. Punch, pulls it down, finds Phillips again. And with a left hand, Boo Boo Phillips has gotten four in a row for the Whalers. They've got it again, back to 11. Robinson with Savon Warren on him. 
Robinson over the top of punch. Francis, tip no good. And Washington comes down with it and promptly throws it to the scorer's table. Coach Cornish says it's tipped. I don't think the officials are buying it. No, I, I think his arm got hit. But the ball was not deflected, but his arm was hit, and that forced the ball to go out. So, again, every time the Whalers get it to that you know, dangerous place, either they make a mistake or the Falcons have an answer. That time they made a mistake. This time Robinson has the answer. Mm. 13 for JJ. Whalers do a good job breaking it. Phillips, got to knock it down, but there's Punch. Good offensive rebound from TJ Punch, and it remains 11, 48-37 Falcons. Robinson to the basket. A late call. Washington was inside, and that's a late call against Washington. They're going to say he got a piece of them, two shots for for Saab, and I. And that's the fourth one on Washington, but I don't know where that. That's a late call. So Robinson's at the line to shoot too. First one is good, 49-37, Falcons by 12. Gaskin back in the game because Washington just picked up his fourth. And that's too bad because he was giving them some good energy here in the third period. Robinson misses the second. Simons Gaskin gets the rebound. Phillips, cross court. Williams, open three, good! D. Will with the triple. Lead is down to nine. The Whalers have succeeded in getting it back to single digits. A nice steal from Simons Gaskin. Phillips, no foul, but the strip goes off of the Falcons, so it'll stay with the Whalers. And if that had been an uncontested layup. We would have seen the house come down because the Whalers are on a little run. We're gonna see Virtue back in the game. He gave them some good minutes in the first half as well. And a timeout for New London. And we're gonna take a timeout here as well. They've got it to nine, 49-40. Will the Falcons respond? You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. All that is good begins with a smile. At Waterford Dental Health, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the personalized, gentle care that you deserve. Part of our commitment to serving our patients includes providing information that helps them to make more informed decisions about their oral health needs. Our website is a resource we hope you'll find both useful and interesting. Contact us today at waterforddentalhealth.com. Well, the Whalers keep chipping away. Devin Williams has been a scoring machine. It's down to nine now, 49-40. You know, we watched, again, I, I'm gonna continue to give St. Bernard credit, right? It's not just that you're a state champion, it's about, they've been faced with adversity this year. New London led the entire game against them. And they just kept hanging around, finding ways to stay in it. And then they took them into overtime and won. Fitch had the same sort of rattling effect against St. Bernard's, but St. Bernard's never let it affect them. They stayed, they just kept going at it. They kept going at it, and eventually they figured it out and they flipped the script. New London is, has shown life here to get it to nine, but they've got to keep at it and not give up easy shots. Williams for three, that's short. Warren lost it, Punch gets it. Back to Phillips, who scores at the basket, and it's seven. 49-42, the closest New London has been in a long time. That was a great play out of the timeout. Foul on the floor. Sports Doctor was in on the huddle after the timeout. Sports Doctor, what did Coach Sylvan say? Well, there was a set piece in the corner for Williams on the three, and they got the garbage put back. But Coach Dave Cornish urged his team. He said, listen, this is our first real run of the game. Let's keep our foot on the gas pedal, and let's keep it going. You know, we can hang with these guys. So just take care of the basketball on the offensive end. 
and no second chance opportunities for Fitch on the offensive end. Good with a huge three, Virtue with a tip. They can't keep Virtue off the glass. That big body has given the Whalers a lot of problems. Yeah, the 50-50 ball battle has really gone to the Falcons tonight. And it, that's hurt New London because I really thought that they would be the one that would get more of those 50-50 balls going into the contest. And Akeem Davis back in the game replacing Punch. They got, they got to find an answer to Virtue. You can't athletically rebound over him. You have to get position early because he is going to seal you off. He just did a brilliant job on back-to-back -back offensive rebound attempts. Big screen now by Virtue. Yeah, this high ball screen has given him fits. Good, hangs in the air and scores. X marks the spot. 51-42, back to nine. New London has to make an adjustment on how they guard that high ball screen. They can't switch the big onto the guard. Simons Gaskin draws the block on Virtue. That one almost went down, but KK will shoot two instead. That was a 50-50 call there, so New London needed it to go their way. Sports doctor's been listening in, what do you got? Hey, Casey and Coach, too, you know what? Fitch has been front running this whole game. Now it's getting a little bit tighter. You're down to single digits, seven, eight points. Let's see how they respond with the London coming at them a little bit. I think these next two minutes and 18 seconds are real important in this game. 51-43 uh, as Gaskin knocks the first one down. I think Virtue actually hurt his, himself by f falling back. I think he, if it's such a thing as taking the charge less aggressively, I think part of it's like, you know, a big guy like that wouldn't wouldn't go down so easily. If that makes any sense at all. I'd go right back to that high ball screen. And they are. That was a nice job. Davis hedged, got the, pit, uh, got the uh, hand on it, but then a touch foul on top of it. But KK got over the screen. And, and that they got to talk and the guard has to get over the screen. You can't keep allowing the guard to get screened and force that switch. If you're gonna, if you're, if you're gonna get screened, then there has to be a high hedge, you're right. Robinson, that one doesn't go down. Out of the pack, Simons Gaskin. Underneath, Davis and the Whalers have cut it to six, 51-45, and they're putting a little pressure on. Out of the pack, Fitch has numbers. Good, he lost it, out of bounds. And it'll be Whaler basketball. A crazy series of events. Hard to believe I'm saying this, but New London's got it to six with the basketball. The crowd is coming alive a little bit here. Cross court, Warren. Drives it baseline, he turns it over, he was looking for Davis. Nice hustle in the other direction, but Robinson too quick to the basket. 53-45. Too much uh, dribbling and dancing over there from Savan, and just keep it simple, let's get shots up. Boo Boo underneath, Davis can't get it to go, good defense from Saab and Francis. And here come the Falcons answering the Whaler run. Under a minute remaining here in the third period. And we're gonna get a whistle and a timeout for the Falcons. That's a full timeout, so we're gonna take a quick break. Whalers are down eight. Falcons, what are they gonna do coming back? You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. All that is good begins with a smile. At Waterford Dental Health, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the personalized, gentle care that you deserve. Part of our commitment to serving our patients includes providing information that helps them to make more informed decisions about their oral health needs. Our website is a resource we hope you'll find both useful and interesting. Contact us today at waterforddentalhealth.com. J.J. Robinson, despite excellent hustle from Caden Simons-Gaskin, finishes it 
The lead is eight for the Falcons. It was 16 when we went into the locker room at halftime. So the Whalers have shaved off eight here in the third period. And they've got this thing down to single digits. But the turnovers have been a problem. The Whalers have been turning it over at crucial moments. Timeout for Fitch has four, New London has two here with 52 seconds remaining left in the third. Yeah, I mean, a couple of minutes ago, Sports Doctor said, how's Fitch going to handle the pressure? Well, as the score gets closer, well, if they get the ball to number one or number three, they'll be fine. <laughs> Those guys, they know how to score. Great inbound, Saab with the catch and the score. That was a set play off the timeout. Whalers back down 10, 55-45. Fitch has an answer for everything the Whalers are throwing back at him. Phillips drives, pulls up from the free throw line, can't get it to go. Warren, strong rebound, no foul. And it's off of the Whalers. That's great interior defense from the Falcons. Yeah, and it's similar to last Friday night, Casey, these inside shots, there's a lot of bodies in there, the refs are letting them play a bit, and the bunnies aren't going. Falcons can get the glass shot of the third period. Robinson has Warren on him. Francis, away from the basket. Back to Robinson, under 10 seconds. Robinson wants to take Warren one-on-one. -on -one. And we're going to get a bailout foul with 1.8 seconds remaining in the third period. Fouls on Davis. That's his third. That's the fifth, so even more costly. Robinson will shoot two. Yeah, that's a killer right there, but no matter what happens here with these two free throws, New London in the quarter break has to make sure they shore up the high ball screen defense for the fourth quarter. That's the only way they're going to be able to chip into this lead is if they are able to stop. Because as the game gets down to crunch time, you know it's going to be JJ or Xavier for the Falcons getting the ball in those situations. So they have to make sure that they understand how they're going to guard that ball screen. Robinson made the first one, 56-45. One more for JJ, knocks that one down as well. 57-45, 12 point lead. Williams will launch it, good if it goes at the buzzer, no good, we're at the end of three. 12 point lead for the Falcons, 57-45, fourth quarter action on the other side. You're watching Game Day Live on Day.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. We're back. The Whaler cheerleaders out there. Not a lot to cheer about at the moment, though. The Whalers had it to six, and so the Falcons finished the third quarter with a little 6 0 run to get it back to 12. Every time New London tries to answer, Fitch has an answer. The Falcons so far have been very impressive with their ability. Uh, to come up with, you know, key turnovers and key baskets. Yeah, and I mean, you know, not to oversimplify it, Casey, but sometimes it is that simple. You're just not going to beat Fitch with 45 points uh, in three quarters. So New London's going to have to, you know, have a really offensive, big offensive explosion here this quarter. They're going to have to score 20, 25 points this quarter uh, to be able to win this game. And where are those points going to come from? Well, we still haven't seen a consistent secondary score for the Whalers, but eight minutes to go. Let's see what happens. Sports doctor was listening in. What do you got for us? It's all situational basketball set play out of the out of the break, Casey. And Coach Sylvan said we took their best shot. We're up by ten. Let's close the game out. Plain and simple from the Fitch Falcons. Good stepped on the line after he got his own offensive rebound. So 
The lead remains 12, 57-45. Hood leads all scores with 19. Robinson with 18 for the Falcons. For the Whalers, 17 for Williams, and no other scorer has more than nine. KK for three, back iron, no good. Good hustle rebound by Warren. Phillips hangs in the air and turns it over. Up ahead it goes to Xavier Good. He can't score, but there for the offensive putback is Timmerman, and he can't score. Now the Whalers come out of it. Warren. He gets fouled by Robinson as he was heading to the basket. And I believe that'll be on the floor. So that's going to be on the floor. So the Whaler will, Whalers will have the basketball here. Are they going to call it? All right, they're going to say he was in the act of shooting, so he's going to be at the line. That surprises me. That looked like that foul was uh, on the step. And now I think I'm right. <laughs> and I am right. All right. Don't doubt yourself, Casey. That's, listen, the world is a sa safer and better place when I'm right. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time Mike Tomorrow said that the, you know life would be easier if everyone just agreed with him, I'd have a lot of dollars. Simons Gaskin loses the ball on the way to the hoop, and I think he just got a bailout call there himself. But they'll take it. I think that's just going to be called out of bounds off of... Off Falcons. a pitch when no, one, when no one touched it, but hey, over the course of the game, yeah, this game is a tough one to officiate. It really yeah, is. It'll balance out. Punch gets it at the foul line, tries to drop it down to Warren. Warren spins, and a great rebound by Francis. That's a tough shot. Robinson drives, hangs, JJ! Hey, hey, basket is good and the foul. Man, you just, you, you can't let him get going downhill, especially with his right hand. Uh, he's, he's so agile. He's able to finish in a variety of ways, taking contact. 20 has, points for Robinson. He just has that natural scoring ability. You gotta make a concerted effort to not let him get going north-south. If he makes this, the lead's back to 15, and he misses. But the lead remains 14, 59-45. Williams drives, floats, block on Francis, and Williams will shoot two. But you're right, tonight it's been about Superman is in the building but on the other side, you got Batman and Robin. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and to win against good teams, you need two guys that are able to put up, you know, 15, 20 points for you. And unless you got one guy who's going to give you 50, but like Chris Dunn used to do. But um, nobody like that in the league this year. So New London still has to search for that guy who's going to get the 15 to 20 on the other side of Dev's 15 to 20. Full court pressure and the foul is going to be on Gaskin. Whalers are within 13, 59, 46. That foul is away from the, from the play as he was trying to catch up with Robinson. Third foul on Gaskin. Timmerman to inbound. Gives it to Good. They trap Good. He finds Robinson, though. Nice job by Xavier Good. Robinson off to the races. Finds Saab for three. Got it! Malachi Saab sensing victory on the horizon as the lead is back to 16. Phillips pulls up in the lane. No good. Timmerman rebounds. Good. Where, uh, Falcons want to push, good from the free throw line. Oh, the bank is open. Off the glass for Xavier. 18 point lead, Casey, for Fitch. Williams for three. 
no good. And Hall had it in his hands, and it was knocked off his knee. And with Falcons with a chance to take their biggest lead of the game. The Whalers with only one point this quarter. I said at the quarter break, they're going to have to score about 25 this quarter to win it. Looks like Fitch might get 25 this quarter. Good, drives baseline, now crosses over. Good defense. Out of bounds it goes, it'll stay with the Falcons. Timmer middle inbound, Virtue into the game, replacing Francis. Falcons have had some great set plays off the inbounds. Robinson now with Williams on him. Gets the screen from Virtue. Drives on punch. Hangs on punch. Basket is good and the foul. Oh, JJ's feeling it. 20 point Falcon lead. 22 points for Robinson. To go along with 21 for good. And again. Fitch is exploiting the Whaler defense with that high ball screen. The, the communication isn't there. They keep running the guard right into the chest of the defender, and they're forcing a forward or a big to guard one of the dynamic Fitch scores. You know, we talked about the youth of the league, right? We talked about how, oh, you know, the Whalers are all coming back. The St. Bernard Saints are all coming back. Well, let's not forget, as Simon's Gaskin knocks down a three. That Robinson's a sophomore, Good is a sophomore, Sebastian's a junior, Saab's a junior. The Falcons are all coming back too. These, you know, the top three teams in the league aren't going anywhere. Oh, beautiful cut by Good. Francis found him. Fitch back up 20. piece for the dynamic duo and um, you know there's a lot of like you said there's a lot of youth in the league but if you just had to pick two guys for three years I I, I don't know I, I think these two Falcon guards are the two you might pick Williams no good Hall rebounds punch puts it back Whaler still fighting down 18 Robinson flying to the basket, over punch and scores. Too easy, too easy. Can't let him go north-south. Simons Gaskin draws the foul. KK will shoot two. Seventy-one, fifty-one. The lead was sixteen at the half and. Fitch has tacked on four, and it's just been impossible for the Whalers. They got it to within four and just couldn't ever get closer. Yeah, it's a, it's a testament to the preparation that Fitch had coming into this game. They were locked in from the start. And really, I thought it was the decision by the coaching staff of Fitch to not press full court that really neutralized New London's offense right from the start. And it, I, all night long, they've just been searching for answers on the offensive ends. Well, with 4.05 remaining and a big lead for Fitch, we can turn our attention very quickly uh, to Tuesday. We'll be right back at it on Tuesday. Uh, we'll be at the X in Waterford, and Fitch calls a timeout. We'll keep it here. You know, we've focused on the early going. We've seen St. Bernard's, we've seen Fitch, we've seen New London, we had the classic. Uh, turning our attention elsewhere on Tuesday uh, to a whole different look. Uh, the two teams we're gonna have on Tuesday are, I think, emblematic of the next tier in the league, 
Uh, but two teams that are, are going to bring, uh, I think, a lot of excitement to, to our matchup. Waterford, which is 1-4-5 straight and has a real dynamic duo with their uh, guard uh, and, you know, the true big man of the league, Juan Morel, all 6-10 of them. 7-2 if you include the, the hair. And on the other side, Wheeler, uh, who made a real splash last year in, in Division Two, and has returned uh, everybody. Uh, to, and they're playing great basketball, and, and they're, you know, going to be seven and two, eight and two when we get into the game. So uh, Wheeler trying to step up on Tuesday to play at a higher level with a Waterford team who's, you know, been a, a Division One staple for years now. But Waterford's hot. Wheeler's good. You're going to get a chance to see DeAndre Bransford and Juan Morrell, and it's going to be a, a, a different matchup than what we've seen from these teams. They're not going to go up and down the floor the same way, but we should see really good basketball Tuesday as well. I'm really interested to see, you know, what Wheeler is all about. Wheeler has a chance to win the Division II ECC tournament. How do they stack up against a team from the, from the Division I, even though Waterford's in Division II, of the regular season, but they're Division One in the tournament. How does Wheeler stack up against those types of athletes? They're a senior heavy team, and they have an opportunity to compete with, with one of the storied uh, high school teams in our league. Offensive foul as punch went a little too hard, and Francis has stood in there a number of times tonight, takes the charge. It's a 19-point lead for the Falcons, 71-52. So Punch has fouled out. But I think your, your point is spot on. We'll talk a little bit more about that matchup in a second. Keith, what do you got over there, Sports Soccer? Yeah, a couple things, Casey. You talk about Wheeler. They kind of remind me of Griswold a few years back when he made a big run, and let's see what they got. So, you know, Wheeler's a really good team, so let's check out what they got. Also, the Fitch Falcons, all they're talking about is staying focused and closing this game out as they turn the ball over. But... Trying to stay focused, close the game out, don't make any mistakes. Beautiful in transition, Saab running the floor. Now, I was at Wheeler recently, and uh, it's not true, uh, the rumor that there is a bronze statue of the sports doctor as the most prominent Wheeler athletic graduate of recent years that it did not prove true. <laughs> I was hoping that it was. Good. Gets it to go. The lead is now 20, 19, 75, 56. Three minutes remaining. Warren tries to find Washington. Francis comes out of the pack to Robinson the other direction. Robinson drives and scores. I love the aggression with which J.J. Robinson attacks the rack. 77, 56. Long three for Phillips is short. Washington turns it over. Saab ahead of the pack. Malachi, showtime! And there's the exclamation point the Falcons were looking for. Timeout, New London. I think this win might be almost cathartic for Fitch for a number of reasons. The Falcons came into the John T. Conway Gymnasium having not beaten New London in a while, knowing the Whalers were coming off a loss to St. Bernard's, and the Falcons emphatically showing what they're made of, 23 point lead, and that dunk is gonna send the crowd to the exits. Yeah, and when you look back to this week, once again, New London hasn't played since last Friday when they lost the heartbreaker to St. Bernard. When we look back, this is Fitch's third game of the week, but that game on Monday night, they hung tough with the Saints at St. Bernard Gymnasium. Maybe we looked at it as like, oh, well, maybe the Saints just didn't take them too seriously, but now when you look at how good the Falcons have played tonight, you know, maybe that was the game of the ECC season so far. And boy, oh boy, are we lucky that we get the rematch on game day in a couple weeks when St. Bernard's goes down to cry. Well, you know, I think you look at Fitch going into this game tonight, New London's two losses. New London is 
a mere seconds away from being undefeated and maybe ranked in the top five in the state. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone was, you know, thinking, you know, could Fitch rise to this occasion? And what we've seen is, you know, Sports Doctor always talks about matchups make fights. This might be the worst kind of matchup for New London, a team that can dis disrupt them as well. Sports Doctor, you got something for us. Yeah, Juice, you know, during that timeout, what do you say to your team if you're Dave Cornish? You've been in that position. You know, how do you manage the game from here on out? I mean, you're getting your doors blown off at home. You, you know, what's your message to coach? The, the most important thing is to keep your composure, finish the game, keep working hard, no antics, no bad body language. You, know, you don't want to soil the name on the front of the jersey. You know, this is a long season, and you have a lot left in the tank and, and a lot of games left to play. So just finish it out. We'll, we'll regroup. But right now, get to the end of the game. Don't do anything silly. And we'll talk about the next day when the next day comes. 80 to 58. Good remains at the line. You know, sometimes a loss like this is a wake-up call for a lot of um, a lot of coaches and players. And, and you, you realize that maybe some of the things that you wanted to do, you cannot do anymore. Williams gets to the basket for the Whalers. Or it might just be as simple as they haven't played since last Friday, and they're rusty, and they played a really, really good Fitch team here tonight and they didn't have the energy to match what Fitch brought into the gym. It might be just as simple as that. So let's, we're going to keep it here while there's a timeout. We're going to talk about that. Now, I'll, I'll give you uh, my thought on that. I think that Fitch is a very difficult matchup for New London because of the dynamic duo uh, and the athleticism on the front line. It's, it's a mirror image of New London in a lot of ways. But we were talking about who's that second guy for New London. Well, Fitch doesn't have to answer that question. They know where their points are coming from. When things go sideways, they know right where they're going with the ball. And they want to turn it sloppy. Now, if they were to play again, when, they, when I should say when they play again, New London's not going to fall victim to that same bad start. And, you know, if you're not down 16 at half, right, if you're not down 15 at the end of the first quarter, maybe you get a different game. But I think that even if we started over, started from scratch, just, just Fitch's style is problematic for New London because I think it's, it exposes some of the mismatches that New London might have defensively. Um, and then offensively, New London knew going into this year. Everyone was going to try to focus on Williams, take them out of transition, and say, okay, now what do you got? That's what Fitch was able to do tonight. It's not, you're not always able to do it. New London missed a ton of open looks. So again, if you go back to the beginning and say, you don't turn it over eight times in the opening few minutes and you make some of those shots, maybe this game looks a lot different. Yeah, and there were a lot of execution errors um, by the Whalers, uh, most notably um, how they guarded the high ball screen. So I'm sure that's something that can be corrected and fixed in tomorrow's practice. Um, you got to know the personnel. I, I don't know if they uh, fully respected the shooting ability of Saab. Uh, he's had a tremendous night shooting the basketball. He, he reminds me of that NBA player that just sits in the corner and, and just that's his only job is to hit the corner three. And, and, he, and he, Wally Zerbiak, the sports doctor, chimes in in my ear. Uh, Bruce Bowen, uh, Bobby Portis for the Bucks. A lot of those guys just you know sit in the corner, hit that three, and, um, and that's what, what Saab did tonight. Um, but let's not take away from two stars that if they if they weren't born before tonight they were born tonight in Conway and Xavier Good and JJ Robinson are as good a duo as we've had in this league in quite some time um, reminds me a little bit uh, just quickly off the top of my head of the of the Dev Ostrowski uh, Luke Leonard Luke Leonard duo and when they were sophomores how how dynamic they were when already and you were and you just kept saying to yourself we got we got a game plan against these guys that was me by the way we got a game plan against these guys for for two more years after this year um so there, there's been a lot of those those duos but uh, these guys are really good and boy oh boy they are going to be fun to watch this is 
you know, I don't know what Coach Sylvan will say, but I, I think this is the best team he's had since he's taken over as the head coach uh, at Fitch. We've had, you know, Mikey Bassetto and J.J. Brennan. We've had, uh, you know, New London's had a whole, you know, series of those guards. It was, you know, Tyson and whoever played alongside of him. Uh, all the way back, Chris Dunn and Ch Torn Childs Harris. And, uh, you know, there's been so many, uh, so many good dynamic guard pairs, but I think you, you're right. Um, we haven't had two kids, same grade, same age, coming up together at the same time for three years. Like, there's a lot to like here, and yeah, we'll see what they what they do with it as Robinson's at the line, uh, and uh, he misses the first one. So, you know, I think this game reminded me a little bit of last night's Milwaukee Bucks Boston Celtics game as well. And, and what I mean by that is Milwaukee last night seemed like they were poised. They hadn't been playing great. But they just seemed like they were poised to knock the Celtics back, and they wanted nothing more to do, than to do that. I kind of felt like Fitch has been on the edge of this win for a while against New London, and like I said, cathartic. Uh, they really, this game was, was very, very big for the Falcons. And I'm just gonna let that speak for itself. That's awesome. That's, that's like your uh, pitching wedge on the 18th hole. And just make it stop, right? Okay, stop, stick it right stick there. Stick it right there. Make the putt, too. <laughs> so 83-63, it's a 20-point Falcon lead with under a minute remaining. 82-65, check that. Our clock. Saab in the other direction, and he was not going to throw that one thrown down, but they're putting it back as Robinson again. Forty-two point four seconds remaining. Eighty-four sixty-five. Falcons on top. Robinson heading to the bench. We'll get some of the substitutes into the game. Nick Wagner into the game. Sakis Reels into the game. Keith Go into the game. Zai Tyler into the game. Nope. Nick Wagner. Check that. Hall for three. Back iron. No good. Andre Roberts tracks it down. He says, I'm getting a shot off no matter what in this one. I'm in the book. I think he must have, he might have thought like uh, there's only one second on the clock or something. A happy group of Falcons. Uh, what a successful week. Competitive at St. Bernard's and then wins over East Lyme in New London. That's a good week. Eighty-four sixty-five. Hall. Eighty-four sixty-seven. Last shot at the buzzer. Good if it goes. No good for Reels. There's your final score. Eighty-four to sixty-seven. As we effort the coach Sylvan and our player of the game. Uh, we will send it away for a quick break. Uh, this message brought to you by the law offices of Dan Horgan in New London. We'll be back with the coach's interview. I came here in 1992 not knowing a soul, and I started a law practice in New London. The community has supported us ever since. Thank you. Game day athletes, playing high school sports is going to be one of the best experiences of your life. I know you give 100% effort and you treat your teammates, your opponents, and your coaches and officials with respect. Are you doing the same in school? Are you showing up every day and giving 100% effort? Are you giving the respect to your classmates, your teachers, and your parents? Sure, winning is great. And give it your best today when you go out on that field. But never forget, getting a good education will be the best game you'll ever play in your life. We're back, big victory for the Falcons. Our coach's interview is brought to you by the law offices of Dan Horgan, located in New London, Connecticut. The sports doctor is with a victorious Charles Sylvan sports doctor. Hey coach, 
This win right here coming on the road against a good New London team has got to feel pretty good. The kids are very excited. I think you can see it by their reaction to the result. Talk about the execution of your team, Coach. On the defensive end, you talked about making New London feel just a little bit uncomfortable out there. Well, the name of the game for us is transitions. We call it special teams, like in football. So we're trying to change as frequently as possible so people don't get comfortable with our look. And we also talk about transitions when getting in and out of inbounds and side out of bounds to try to out-execute people before they can get set up. Now, Coach, they made a bit of a run. They cut the lead down to six at one point. But it seemed like you guys didn't waver. Did you like the way your team responded? I thought the kids showed a lot of trust and belief in themselves by pulling together when things got tough. We didn't expect to come over here and walk out of here with an easy win. That's a very good team in there. Now, how good this can, can this team be, Coach? Well, we don't know. We're going to find out at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> All right. You got J.J. Robinson. He is our player of the game. Come on in here tonight, son. 30, 30 points tonight coming in. Talk about the mindset of your game personally. Oh, my mindset it was just come get a W. And, you know, this is a tough environment. There's a lot of people here. You know, we talked about just we didn't care if there was four people watching or 1,400 people watching. We just wanted to win. Right. Now talk about the toughness of this team and, you know, and what it takes to, to beat a team like this And because they're coming at you hard and heavy. Um, the toughness of the team, we, we're going over in practice. You know, we, it was all mental. This was a mental win for us. You know, we just we did, we, <laughs> we played our roles as a team and we, we got it done. You feel like this team is, can get better? Oh, for sure. This is a long season. We got a long, long time, and we can get a state championship in that Fitch. All right. Fitch Falcons making some noise tonight in the ECC, Casey. Well, the Falcons came in tonight with a game plan. They executed it. Uh, New London seemed to come out a little flat, a little, uh, a little listless even, and before they knew it, uh, they were in a world of hurt, and then despite a valiant effort from the Whalers and a lot of work, they just couldn't uh, get out of the hole that they had dug for themselves. Uh, talk a little bit about your impressions uh, of what you saw from Fitch tonight. Yeah, I, you know, I thought that what Coach Sylvan said in the in the post game, they showed a lot of trust in one another. Um, really showed. I thought you saw that from the Falcons, and I think New London's still searching for that. I also liked what he said about <laughs> when Sports Doctor asked him how good can eight o'clock tomorrow can, morning can be, and that and that reminds me of something that Coach Curland always used to say and preach is you you gotta be leery of the big C complacency and you, there's no champions crowned in January and and I know that high school sports is is much more than than just holding the trophy at the end but you compete to win and I know that Fitch has been trying for years now to try and get to that mountaintop of both the ECC and the state. Uh, this is a signature win. You can't help but wonder how much of an influence uh, Coach Kareem Brown has had uh, on the mindset of these young Falcons. Uh, I'm just so impressed with the entire team, the dynamic duo of Good and Robinson, but also the, the other pieces. You know, Francis inside getting his hands on everything. Uh, Saab hitting those corner threes and, and also athletic enough to elevate and jam it down. Uh, just a complete team. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with, Casey. There's going to be a lot of people who, uh, you know, go to their news outlet of, of choice tomorrow. Uh, not locally to the day because you guys were all watching tonight. But, I mean, other around the state, this is the kind of win that people are going to go, really? They're going to see 20-point win over New London, and that still matters. Uh, and around the state, teams are going to go, huh? What's, what's going on there and fit with Fitch? And I think if you were to watch film and stuff like that, you're going to see that Fitch is legit on, on a state level. Uh, and you heard J.J. say there, you know, that's what we want. We want a state championship at Fitch. I mean, it's, it's fun. These kinds of games are fun. You don't win anything in January, but you can, you can certainly, you know, plant your flag that we're, we're for real and we're here. Yeah, you definitely have – you plant the seeds – and, and now you're starting to see things grow, and you just got to keep grinding. And I think, you know, the coaching staff, like Coach Sylvan said, it, they're going to keep try to keep these guys, you know, sharp by having them come in uh, bright and early tomorrow morning. Well, a big win tonight for the Falcons here uh, at New London. Uh, back to the drawing board for Coach Dave Cornish and the Whalers for the Falcons uh, avoiding the big C and moving forward. Uh, toward that ultimate goal. Uh, for us on game day, we're back Tuesday. Short week for us. We're back at the X on Tuesday with a great matchup. Uh, the 
Sports Doctors alma mater, the Wheeler Lions at the Lancers of Waterford High School. The X, always a fun place for us to be. So for Peter Wappy, Mike DeMauro, and all the crew, as well as the coach, Chris Juicy, I am Casey O'Neill. It was a pleasure. Have a good night, everybody.